Hi, my name is Maggie Tuardo, and I'm going to read Around the World in 80 Days. Great. Um, who's the author of this? Jules Vaughn. Good, and you're reading this for your third um, work sample for IDEA? Yes. Okay, and this is April 2013. All right. Um, who are the characters of this story, honey? Um, there is Phileas, Fogg, and Passepartout, but there's some other ones that I'm not going to read in this chapter. Okay. And do you want to say anything about Phileas Fogg? What kind of person was he? He was a Frenchman. He was a Frenchman? Phileas Fogg? Oh, you thought I said passport two. That's fine. Phileas okay, passport two was a Frenchman. That's a good description for him. And um, Phileas Fogg was an Englishman. Oh, very good. English gentleman. Uh, he was a gentleman. Very good. Anything else about him? No. <laughs> what did he like? Um, he liked to um, watch his clock and he liked to play whist. Very well said, honey. Okay. Um, and could you tell me the setting of the story? The setting is... Um, around the world. And the setting is around the world? That yeah. makes sense. All right, the setting is where and when. So where it's around the world. Where does it begin? It begins in London. Very good. Okay, and when is this? Does it give a year? No. But it was, it was long ago before they even had airplanes. Okay, good answer. And uh, the plot, can you tell me a little bit about, about what happens in the story? Um, well, what happens is, um, uh, Pass Platoon comes to um, Phileas Fogg's house because he's going to work for Phileas Fogg. And like right after he gets there, um, they like have no time to like get to know each other. Like they are like rushing to get to to get around the world in eighty days. And why do they? Why is he going around the world in eighty days? Because he made a bet at the reform club club that he could travel around the world in eighty days. Great. What would you consider the problem or the conflict? The problem of the story um, that has to be solved. There is. When they are traveling around the world in 80 days, there's this detective that thinks some um, Phileas Fogg is a bank robbery, so he's following him. And okay, so he causes some problems, and then he's fighting against what else? Time? Yeah, time. Yeah, he's fighting <laughs> against time, right? He has to get around in 80 days. Very good. Um, and what's the solution or the ending? How does it end? The ending is that when he comes back to his house, he finds out he goes to the reform club and that he finds out he had made it and he finds out that he gained an hour every day. He... So he gained a whole day by the time he came back because he went around the world. Okay. He outraced the sun. Good job. Very good. Um, all right. Would you like to go ahead and read? Yes. Okay. Let me just take a... All right, let's see what kind of book this is. And it has how many pages? Over 200 pages in it. Okay, with some pictures. Not on every page, but um, on some and every other one. Okay, go ahead. Chapter 2, A New Life for a Frenchman. That's what dude had been watching Phileas Fogg carefully doing their short walk. And he liked what he saw. Fogg was a tall, good-looking man, about 40 years old, with light hair and a mustache, pale skin and beautiful th teeth. He spoke and moved slowly and with perfect control of his words and actions. As for Passepartout, he wasn't at all bad-looking, or looking, although his lips were, were a bit too large and his hair messy. His muscles were very well developed from his day in the circus and gym. The greatest difference between Fogg and Passepartout, however, lay in their personalities. The master was quiet and with, withdrawn, while the servant was lively and talk, talkative. Would Passepartout be able to adjust to Fogg's orderly and regular way of life? He had not fared too well in other English households, 
His most recent job had ended quickly when he scowled his master, young Lord Longfear, for coming home drunk. He, he certainly didn't expect any such behavior from Phileas Fogg. As soon as Mr. Fagg looked for the Reform Club, Passport would begin looking around the house. How neat and clean everything was. The master's clothes and shoes even had numbers showing what time of the year they were to be worn. Passport would walk from Fogg's bedroom to the room that he guessed would be his own. The large clock he saw there was time to the second with the with that in Helios Fogg's room. On the wall above the clock was a list of things for the servant to do. Passport would learn from reading the list that Fogg awoke at exactly 8 each morning and left at exactly 11.30 for the reform club. Passport would do Passport to studies would, would include serving his... Sweetheart, that is just wonderful. You can go ahead and stop. It was great. I know I do. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go right ahead. Okay. Passport to studies was include serving his master tea and toast at 8.23, bringing his shaving water at 9.37 and helping him get dressed starting at 9.40. There would be many other chores to attend between 11.30 when Fogg left the house and midnight when he went to bed. Passport would begin to think of Phileas Fogg as some kind of mischief, but he continued to look forward to his new job as a welcome change for the past. That is fabulous. Thanks. And sweetheart, I just want to say, since we're at a milestone right here, if work sample, uh, what a fabulous job you've done. I can't believe that three years ago you didn't know uh, alphabet in any language and you're reading like that. And that's a real testament to how hard you've worked and what a wonderful mind you have. Thanks. You're welcome, sweetheart. Good job.